Welcome back to Great Day. Well, everybody knows about the troubles that WNBA star Brittany Griner is having trying to get back to the U.S. She was sentenced to nine years in, pr in prison in Russia, and among the possibilities to get her back could be a prisoner swap. So what are the options we wanted to know for Americans in general if we mm -hmm. are detained overseas? So as an ex-Secret Service agent, our next guest traveled mm -hmm. to 60 countries. Stephen Montero, who wrote, he wrote a new book called The Gray mm -hmm. Bird of Baghdad, but has some great things for us to think about, yeah, right, even sure. before we start our trip. Absolutely. So thank you for having me. So, um, yeah, one of the things I recommend that travelers do before they even book their trip is to uh, visit the State Department website and look up the country that you're going to be going to because there's a wealth of information that could be very important and yeah. save you from, you know, falling into some difficult times. Uh, for example, there's information on the political climate in the country. Now, for most travelers, that might not be important, but if you travel in places like Venezuela, North Korea, mm -hmm. understanding the political yeah. climate is very important. It'll give you information on crime, for example. Are Americans being targeted? What areas mm -hmm. of the country that you need to avoid? What kind of scams are being utilized against mm -hmm. a, a tourist? So the, again, very important information. Also, they'll give you information on the quality of medical care. Most people don't think about this no. when they travel. Oh, right. It's not part, you know, you don't, you don't plan on getting sick or, you know, injured yeah. when you're overseas on vacation, even on business. But it does happen. And mm. I just recently had a neighbor that um, went to Mexico and uh, his doctor recommended there that he get a chest x-ray, $6,000. Because wow. the, the medical insurance does right. not work. So uh, in yeah. most cases, it does not work. So if you're, if you're ill or overseas, so you need to be, you know, aware of of the medical conditions as well. Yeah. And one of the things I also recommend um, in light of the Brittany Griner case yeah. is the fact that you need to double check and triple check your, your luggage to yeah. make sure that you're not bringing anything remotely that can be considered contraband to that country because yeah. you can run into some serious problems. If you do run into those problems, are there resources to help you? Like, who do you, you can't just call the president, right? And say, okay, I'm <laughs> no, stuck you, in a foreign country. No, you can't just call the, you can't just call the president. And, yeah. and so most travelers don't realize you know, they think I'm an American citizen, so there's the embassy, there's the consulate, yeah. so I have all these, these right. things available to me. And most people would think that. But I can tell you that the cavalry will not be coming over the hill to rescue mm -hmm. in the fashion that most people think. You know, there are things that the State Department will do for you, but there's things that they will not. And here's what they will not do for you. They will not get you out of jail. They will not come to court and act as an advocate for you. They will not pay your medical bills. They will not pay your legal bills. They will not provide for transportation costs. That's all on you. And most people yeah. don't realize that. But what they will do is they will explain the legal system to you. They will make notifications to your family if they, you know, if, if they need to do that. They'll provide uh, a list of lawyers, for example, that speak English that can help you. But you can see the, the problems that can happen. But yes. most of this is on you. And uh, people don't realize that and you just need to be mindful and careful mm -hmm. um, about those situations when you you know if you do get arrested and detained um, another okay. thing I also uh, recommend people be aware of is the cultural um, situation in different mm -hmm. countries because um, that can also get you in trouble I was in Morocco once and I was taking pictures of the Atlas Mountains and we're beautiful but there were some Moroccan women in the in the photograph, and they were wearing oh. full burkas, and they got extremely upset, um, and actually started chasing wow. me because to them that was an affront. It's a, it has religious connotations to take their mm -hmm. their photograph. I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. So you know, again, you know, be aware of those things, and if you're not certain, just uh, just ask. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're better off doing that. And you you know, avoid some problems yeah. for yourself. Be yeah. respectful of the culture that's over there. And you wrote this new book, The Great Bird of Baghdad. What, is this kind of like your experience as Secret Service or? Yeah, so it, it's kind of interesting how that came to pass. So when I retired from the Secret Service, I got a call from a private company that was looking for someone with my skills. So when I went to visit them to talk about this job opportunity, um, they couldn't tell me much about it. Um, and so I figured it might have been a classified government program. And as it turned out, what that's what it turned out to be. Okay. And um, it wasn't until I took the job and uh, took the job on a leap of faith, and I recommend never do that. <laughs> so, um, Another tip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I took the, took the position. It wasn't until uh, a couple of weeks later that I found out what they wanted me to do. And what that was was to find a missing uh, Iraqi bioweapon scientist that had information vital to our interests here to prevent another biological attack. So huh. the story is about my two and a half year pursuit of this scientist and all oh, the wow. things that we had to do to, to find him uh, during the time period, which is 
2006 to 2008, um, there was a campaign to pretty much kill uh, or kidnap all the scientists in Iraq, and that was being done for a couple of reasons. Number one, they wanted to um, kidnap those scientists that had weapon making skills to use against mm -hmm. our forces. And the other scientists, they simply wanted to eliminate them and get rid of them uh, because they didn't want the new wow. Iraq government to be successful. So that's what happened during that time yeah. period. So that caused our scientists to go underground because yeah. he was fearing for his own life. So that tells the this story of like that. This is like one story of many that you can share <laughs> you had in your yeah, life. What an incredible you. life. We'll yeah, have to get the you. book to read more. Absolutely. And thank you thank for all you. your advice today, too. Absolutely, Stephen. Thanks so yeah. much. Absolutely.